I started painting about 22 years ago, right after my son was born. I had a really sort of traumatic birth with him. Like a, an hour after he was born, I had a eclamptic seizure, went into a coma, and had like a near-death experience. And after that, I just feel like I had so many images that really had to come through. You all know these are sort of interpretative responses to the work that's up here. A slender aspen, somehow ageless in her length and white skin bark. She is slung in silk casing, with monarch wing hair flickering and arcing towards more expression, ever more expression. So I, I did a lot of meditating pray to like Dolly, who was one of my favorite, to like get his knowledge and not his insanity. <laughs> and I, just, I learned how to paint really fast. It was just like I had so many things that needed to come through. And it was a lot about sort of my experience with becoming a mother, being a wife, like really very personal. isolating process to paint and I just don't know if it's even reaching anyone if anyone was connecting with them and if it meant anything to anyone so I'm just so moved and touched and at people's courage tonight I tell myself that sex doesn't matter I mourn for the sexy woman I imagined I would become I treasure memories moments when I almost felt like her behind a tree in a red dress with no panties on, or kneeling in a parking lot at midnight, succumbing to passion as if there were no other option. She is a wildness within me, a loud nocturnal silence to quarantine with other feelings that don't make sense. No more boom boom. Mm -hmm. Gently make love to every cell in my body. I feel love, I feel hate, I feel trees, I feel leaves. Caress me when you see me. Caress me out of compassion for my humanity. And I volunteered to take part in the program because I've been confronting similar issues before most of you were born. <laughs> and since then I've been working with themes of being a woman in this world, sensuality, sexuality, intimacy, and just recently I've been getting more political. And I was sort of a result of my son, who is now 22. When I first came to Santa Fe, it was right around the Occupy movement beginning, and my son got involved in that, and I thought, well, if he can lay down in the streets of New York, I should be doing something too. So I just started getting really informed and that's kind of when this work evolved. I've been wanting to be in the desert for years, like before my son was born it just took forever for me to get here and you know I spent years sort of getting out of like poverty and just sort of getting grounded and getting like home and taking care of my son. And, like the heavens hues in cloudless sunny New Mexico One of the things skies. I really wanted to do while I was here is kind of go into the madness of being an artist. I really didn't have sort of the ground or the container to be able to hold it, but I, it, it kind of brought me down. I went into sort of a lot of stuff around the oppression of women, the violence of women, um, my own history of abuse. So it took a while for me to just sort of build that up. You know, years of sort of doing body work and buying a home and taking care of a child. So when I came here, I felt like I had that sort of grounding that I could sort of go into the madness <laughs> and I could handle it. She's one person that is a, finds the light by going through the shadow that I've had to do in, uh, in 
working in different modes myself, it impressed me that she said, well, I have to paint. I have to paint. I like breathing. And it made me question, like, what is it I really have to do? And the answer was more, and more surrender. And letting go, and more surrender. Moses the peace of the pond when I die to all the suffering. A year ago started this sort of strap-on series, and the first painting is the one against the wall with a really huge phallus. And that was happened after I was just listening to Amy Goodman a lot and hearing so much of what was going on around, um, I call people with penises, or people who were taking on the qualities of people with penises, could be women, were making all the rules about women's bodies. And I was just getting really, really angry about it. Like, that's just not right. I was showing it to a good friend of mine who's an artist, and she suggested I do a series on it. Um, and then the images just started coming. And I was like, okay, I'm kind of going into the madness of it. And sometimes it, they don't totally make sense to me. I mean, I get the symbology. You know, the, the strap-on really represents all kinds of things to me, like the times where women take on the qualities of men or what men are supposed to be. And also, also men in it. It represents this sort of like hard, cold, lifeless thing that penetrates. It's, it's, you know, it's not a loving, sweet thing that comes into someone that's more of a violation. And it's interesting, the responses I've gotten from it that have been sort of um, disturbing, and this is not to sort of shame anyone who might have this response, but some of it's been very, like, they felt really turned on by it, and that confused me and sort of disturbed me at first. Like, wow, this is really about like oppression and violence, sort of the domination of the earth from the masculine and the imbalance of the feminine and the masculine and the, how the masculine is really sort of crushing the feminine. But I, I'm coming to accept and understand this. It's, it is erotic. I mean, it has all these qualities in it of eroticism and sexuality, abuse, and freedom, vulnerability, like particularly this one and that one over there is really around, um, as a woman, you know, can a woman be really open and soft? And is it safe to be that way in this world? Is it safe? And um, it's, this woman is totally vulnerable. She's no longer encumbered with a phallus. She's hanging there. And a very reasonable question is, is it safe? And it seems like expectations it should be safe and it can be safe and we all hope it will be safe. When I was younger I was a feminist and uh, worked in a house for beaten women and was trying to um, be very tough and cool and like a man and powerful, what I thought was powerful and after all these years I realize that what is powerful for me is to be actually totally vulnerable. the masculine and the wounded masculine and you know it's it's not like I have any anger towards men I feel like men have been just as wounded as women like men have to be a certain way 
which I don't think they all, they all want to be that way all the time. A lot of my work is just wanting to have more conversation around men and women, masculine and feminine, and how can we work together to heal both. And the women are being violated, raped, beaten, and there's so much sort of denial of it and acceptance of it. Strap on an attitude. Step up into your radical balance. This is an inside job. This coming full. This coming full bloom. This has got to become a men's issue. It, you know, women aren't raping themselves. You know, we, we've got to have men take this on as the issue to stop the violence against women. And I really feel strongly about that. And I feel like us as women have to come together and really support the men to be in their strong masculine. So I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, that's sort of what my work is about.